Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be going through the power output of a cap pack. Now we're going to try and take what we typically see as a specification on a capacitor bank and then relate that to something we, we better understand. On the left hand side of the whiteboard here, we have a capacitor bank example. Now that specific bank has four capacitors that are mounted to an electronic board. And then from there we get a couple leads that exit that board. Now what's important is all of those capacitors are placed in parallel with each other and the capacitance of them adds. The total sum that we get from this specific capacitor bank is equal to 880 microfarads. We'll get an understanding as to what this 880 microfarads means to us in a short moment here. But first, you may actually find some of these capacitor banks already installed in a ready to fly airplane. You may also see or find a capacitor bank in an electronic speed control that you've already purchased. It is common for electronic speed controls to actually come with one of these banks built right into them. And there's a big reason as to why, and that's so that we can increase the reliability of the electronic speed control and prevent failures, catastrophic failures, of these electronic speed controls. Let's quickly review exactly why we would want to have a capacitor bank within our system. Here we have a graph where we have two different curves being represented. The red line that follows through in this graph is best representing our a curve with no capacitor bank being used. And the blue curve represents when we use a capacitor bank. What's important to note is that this curve only applies when the throttle is not zero or not 100%. Anywhere in between that throttle setting and that is defined by the user pulling the trigger on your radio. What is also interesting to note here is that the PWM feature within the electronic speed control to control RPM of the motor happens at 12,000 times per second. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the PWM effect. Every time you get a pulse of power being sent to the motor, you're gonna get this happening within the input side of the electronic speed control. And you can see that the red line, the red graph is actually showing a much larger height you could see the ripple voltage is what this is going to be known as which is the difference between the peak and the trough voltage amount is going to be about this large where the blue one is reduced to almost half of that value and that's what we're looking for when we go ahead install these capacitor banks into our radio controlled models any model that demands a high amount of power could warrant the use of one of these capacitor banks in order to reduce the amount of ripple voltage that you see. For example, in this example that we've drawn up, we may have actually ran our radio control vehicle and read the graph and saw that we have a ripple voltage of greater than 10% of the nominal battery pack voltage. In that case, we've understood there is a problem. We should never exceed 10%. You should typically target 5% with the exception of a couple peaks exceeding that and going upwards of 10%, but you don't wanna have anything going over 10%. With that being said, we identify that we have a problem and then we go and apply one of these capacitor banks to our system in order to reduce the ripple voltage within. Now, one thing to note, I've drawn in the resting voltage of our battery pack. This is when we go and shut the speed control off by going to 0% throttle, in which case our battery just goes up to its natural resting voltage. What's interesting to note here is that ripple voltage is not the difference between that resting voltage and the loaded voltage. Ripple voltage is the difference between an on and off cycle of this PWM feature that is occurring within the electronic speed control. Now, if you're wondering what 12,000 times per second actually represents, the difference between one peak to the next is this many seconds, 0.000083 seconds or 83 microseconds. Now, the black dotted line represents the average voltage that the motor is going to see. The power output of the motor is not affected by the ripple voltage. Now, we talked about the word farad. What does this actually represent? Well, a farad actually represents the ability for a component to store a charge. And this is obviously an electronic charge. The capacitor can end up storing power for us and then dumping that power. And it can do both of them within 
microseconds, which is exactly what we're gonna be seeing more of. Now when we get to this value here, which is a value taken right from a radio controlled application, I believe it's the Castle Creations bank that they offer. We have 880 microfarads. Well, micro is a very small number. Micro is actually times 10 to the negative six. If we want to actually see this value represented in the base unit, which is just farads, we're gonna get 880 times 10 to the negative six farads. We simply multiply that value by times 10 to the negative six. And what we get is a value represented here in decimal form, that's what it looks like. So it's a very, very small unit of capacitance. Now, if you can imagine, you know the size roughly of what this looks like. If you had a one farad capacitor, the physical size of a one farad capacitor is going to be huge. Now, keep in mind, we are not talking about super capacitors, which is a whole different ball game. Let's go and take this idea and figure out how we can translate this into more of an example that we can understand. Here is the formula in order to understand how we can go ahead and translate this into something that we better know. One farad is equal to one amp being dumped at one volt for one second. And that's what's represented here in our formula. All we need to do now is come up with a scenario and then substitute our value of capacitance into that formula. In that case, we're gonna assume that we're running a vehicle that has a six cell lithium polymer battery and we're gonna pull 100 amps from that. What kind of power are we gonna be able to pull from our capacitor? And for how long can we do that? Well, what's great about capacitors is their ability to dump a lot of power in a very, very, very short period of time. And that's what we're gonna see here. So this capacitor here is 880 times 10 to the negative six farads, and we're gonna equal that to the 100 amps. So we substitute 100 in there, and we substitute our 22.2, and then we're solving for our time component, which is this value of S. Our time component is equal to 0 0.396 microseconds. So you can see and conclude from this that this is an extremely small time that you can actually dump this kind of power with a capacitor bank of this size. If you were to relate this to a battery pack, this would be nothing in comparison to the smallest battery pack that you can find. Now, one thing to note even about this example is that this is the typical discharge curve of a capacitor bank. Somewhere between this black curve and the blue curve is gonna be where they typically lie. Now, as you discharge those capacitor banks, the voltage is continuously dropping. It can follow along this linear curve and it's gonna eventually hit a zero volt mark. And this is the unit of time measured across our horizontal axes. What this tells us, as soon as we start drawing this current for even a small fraction of the time that we've calculated here, this voltage is actually going to drop. If the voltage is dropping, we're not gonna really have a usable 100 amps at 22.2 volts, even for this moment of time. The usable time period is actually gonna be less than that. That is something that you can calculate. We're not gonna go through that in this example. So what exactly can we conclude from what we've gone over here today? The power output of our capacitors can be extremely high. They can dump a lot of power. Now what that means for us is they're not able to sustain the system's power output. If we actually wanted to drive our radio control vehicles off of the, this capacitor bank, this is roughly the amount of time that you'd be able to do that. So this time is pretty well negligible and it would be fully discharged and then you can no longer use any of that charge any longer. Capacitor banks are not intended in any way to be able to sustain power output. Now the last point that we have here is what is the purpose of the cat pack bank? Well this cat pack's purpose is really just to filter out the voltage that we have because we see a bunch of differences in voltage. We want to smooth that out and make that line much flatter. The reason why we don't get a flat line is because we have this thing called PWM that's affecting our voltage. Every time it turns on and off, we get fluctuation in voltage and we need to settle that so we don't destroy the FETs inside of an electronic speed control. If our capacitors break down and can no longer filter the voltage out, you can actually break down those transistors within the electronic speed control and they do not like fluctuations in voltage. This is why we try and increase the reliability by making sure we do not exceed 5%
of the nominal voltage for our ripple voltage and we'd never want to exceed 10% of the nominal voltage as ripple voltage. As long as we do that, we can guarantee that we have a more reliable system. That really sums up the video. I hope this gives you an idea of the true potential that a capacitor bank has in terms of power output. And it also on the side shows you exactly why these are used and how that is done. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.